Hello and welcome to True North News. Are you feeling the burn? Are you riding with Mad Max? Are you a Canadian libertarian or a disaffected principled conservative? Well then you may already be an expert when it comes to Maxime Bernier. But for the rest of us, let's get the who's who. Maxime Bernier's been shaking up the conservative party lately and causing Andrew Scheer more than a few headaches most recently by breaking off to start his own party. And we will be the real conservative alternative to the liberal in a year from now. So where did this guy come from? Maxime Bernier is 55 years old and was born in Saint-Georges, Quebec. He's the son of Gilles Bernier, who was a popular Quebec radio host and also represented their riding of La Beauce for 13 years, first as a progressive conservative under Brian Mulroney, then as an independent. This might help explain Maxime's kind of lone wolf image. Bernier earned a Bachelor of Commerce from Université de Québec à Montréal and his law degree from the University of Ottawa. He worked for nearly 20 years in business, holding positions at McCarthy Tetro, the National Bank, the Office of the Securities Commission of Québec, and Standard Life Canada. He's also been an advisor to former Quebec Finance Minister Bernard Landry and even wrote a book all about tax reform. But Bernier has had a pretty wild and unusual political career. He was first elected as Conservative Member of Parliament for La Beauce in 2006, winning 67% of the vote. If that sounds impressive, it's because it is, especially considering the Conservatives hadn't won a single seat in Quebec in the previous 2004 election. Since 2006, Bernier has consistently won re-election with over 50% of the vote in his riding. So he's popular in his community. But in terms of Bernier's claim to fame, it's not really a super pretty picture. The first bit of spotlight Maxime captured was in the so-called Bernier Couillard affair in 2008. See, he was foreign affairs minister at the time, and he accidentally left classified documents at his girlfriend Julie Couillard's house. Oops! Oh, and Julie Couillard happened to be connected with the Hells Angels biker gang through an ex-boyfriend. So that didn't really help. Needless to say, Bernier resigned from cabinet over this and didn't really have much of a prominent role in the Harper government. After the 2015 election, however, Bernier was one of the first conservatives out of the gate in the race to replace Stephen Harper as leader. He tried to position himself as the principled conservative with libertarian ideas like cutting CBC funding. The PBS, okay. the CBC would still have money from the government, uh, the budget would be a little bit lower. Ending corporate welfare for companies like Bombardier. And to abolish all corporate welfare. And getting rid of supply management for dairy, poultry and maple syrup compare that with the consumers in the U.S. So I'm proud to be the only elected politician that want to abolish supply management. He was generally popular with younger conservatives because he supported decriminalization of marijuana. He had new innovative ideas that appealed to young conservative policy wonks. And he inspired a whole bunch of Mad Max memes. Yeah. But as we mentioned in our Andrew Scheer video, Bernier was very narrowly defeated in May 2017 for leadership of the party. Now most of the former leadership contenders, like Michael Chong, who proposed an unpopular carbon tax, were able to quiet down and accept Andrew Scheer's leadership. But before too long, Bernier was back out there talking about issues like abolishing supply management, even though his leader was taking the party in a different direction. He was very close to releasing a new memoir in which he accused Scheer of winning the leadership thanks to quote-unquote fake conservatives. That led Scheer to kick him out of his role as opposition critic for innovation, science, and economic development. He also got himself into a bit of controversy when he let off a series of tweets criticizing Justin Trudeau's constant emphasis on diversity in Canada. Whether fair or not, people interpreted Bernier's tweets as being anti-immigrant. Bernier, for his part, says he was simply making the claim that being united behind a common vision and set of values is more important for a society than continually pushing for more and more diversity. But finally, the conservative camel's back was broken, so to speak. Just a few days before the 2018 conservative convention in Halifax, Bernier announced he would quit and start his own party. On September 14th, the party got a name, the People's Party of Canada, Parti Populaire du Canada, and a logo. Who's leading the party? Well, Maxime Bernier. What does the party stand for? Well, essentially everything Maxime stands for. His four main pillars are individual freedom, respect, 
personal responsibility and fairness. And he's focusing on things like tax reform, supporting gun owners, reducing immigration to 250,000 people a year from the current 310,000, which by the way is expected to increase to 400,000 people a year under Trudeau's administration. And he's also focusing on, you guessed it, abolishing corporate welfare and supply management of people like ending corporate welfare it motion the government to put the complete abolition of the system of supply management <laughs> on the negotiating table in order to facilitate a new nafta agreement with our american partners and bring down the prices of milk poultry and eggs for canadian consumers <laughs> yes so how successful can the PPC really be? Maxime says he'd like to be Prime Minister and that the party will run candidates in all 338 Canadian ridings, but that means he has to recruit almost a candidate a day between now and the 2019 federal election. What about money? While launching the party name and logo, Bernier claimed he'd raised $140,000 for the party. But in 2015, each of the three major parties spent over $25 million. Bernier did raise $2.5 million for his conservative leadership campaign, but it seems pretty unlikely that the PPC can raise anywhere close to $25 million in just one year. Bernier's party is tapping into something interesting, though. The People's Party of Canada is the first federal party to embrace in some way the new global populism. What is populism? Populism is a political approach that strives to appeal to ordinary people who feel that their concerns are disregarded by established elite groups. Now, most people point to Donald Trump and Brexit when explaining populism. It doesn't seem like Bernie's party has too much in common with them, but consider populism in Ontario. The election slogan for Doug Ford's successful campaign was, For the People. And Maxime Bernier's party is the People's Party. Maxime signaled that he wants to attract principal conservatives, yes, but also disaffected liberal and NDP voters who support his ideas and feel that the establishment, or the elite, just don't understand their concerns. So on the face of it, the People's Party looks like a classic right-wing vote split in Canada, just like when we had the Reform Party and Progressive Conservatives in the 1990s. But it could be that this new party actually steals votes from both right-wing and left-wing. It could even mobilize the roughly 30% of Canadians who don't vote at all. Regardless of how the People's Party of Canada does in the 2019 election, one thing's for sure, you now know who Maxime Bernier is. Did you like our video? Will you support Maxime Bernier and his new party? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and share the video and subscribe to True North News for more interesting and fascinating Canadian political content. I'm Andrew Zettel and from everyone here at TNN, stay informed friends.